Hello all, my name is Pradeep Sridhar, Senior Solutions Architect at AWS, and today we look at S3 Object Lambda. Uh, S3 Object Lambda is a feature in S3 that lets you use your own code to manipulate data as you retrieve the data from S3. Uh, this is a very useful feature uh, that could really open up a lot of options in terms of how you want to store and use your data. Uh, today we're looking to some of the features, uh, do a small demo, and generally understand what this uh, feature is all about. Along with me, we have Rajesh Pichemani, and he'll help us with uh, the demo. Let's go into the agenda first. Uh, let's let's look at uh, the use cases that uh, the S3 object Lambda will apply to, the benefits of S3 object Lambda, a simple architecture, and then Rajesh will help us with the demo, best practices, and references. When we look at the use cases, right? Uh, if you understand what S3 Object Lambda does, it lets you uh, write a, write your own code in Lambda and then have that code manipulate the data that you are uh, accessing in real time, right? So this kind of opens up a lot of possibilities. Possibilities like redacting PAA data for your application, right? The data that you're stored in your applications might be clear text, but depending on who's asking for it, you might choose to redact parts of it. You can also in real time enrich data using other sources. Uh, compressing and decompressing the data is another possible uh, option. And many, many more use cases are possible with this. When you look at uh, the benefits of S3 object data, uh, we have a few options. Uh, First is custom data processing, right? So you can add a, add data processing to uh, a variety of S3 get list and head requests. Uh, the data returned from those requests will get modified as you uh, as you request it. Uh, manage infrastructure, right? So because of the fact that both both S3 and Lambda is essentially serverless, all of this is run using a managed infrastructure, so you don't have to worry about provisioning or managing this. Uh, and seamless integration. Uh, the way this is structured, it seamlessly integrates. So you don't have to worry about uh, really kind of changing your workflow or configuring additional uh, additional workflows to make sure make sure this works. And then enhance flexibility and security because it's all in one solution. Uh, it's it's it really uh, opens up a world of possibilities in terms of flexibility, right? So let's look at the architecture next. So as you can see, the architecture is fa fairly straightforward, right? So, so the S3 storage is fronted by an S3 access point, right? Uh, so when a user requests the data to be retrieved, he, instead of calling the access point directly, will call an S3 object lambda access point. And that uh, forwards the request to uh, an object lambda, right? And then it actually kind of uh, uses the S3 access point to get the data, execute transformation, and then resp and then send the data back to the user. So let's go into a small demo to see how this all works in real in practice. Rajesh, over to you. Sure. Thank you, Pradeep. I've created. Um different tabs in accordance with the architecture diagram that you just saw. Starting from the right to left, we are starting with the bucket that contains several objects. For this demo, we'll be focusing on one of the text file. If you open this file, it gives few information about the S3 object lambda. Obviously, it's a text information pulled out from the official documentation. We'll be using this to illustrate the concept of S3 object Lambda. The first step in this process is creating an access point. Access points are nothing but an entry point to your bucket. It's as similar as accessing to a bucket directly, but it provides many benefits just like the bucket policies do. Creating an access point, just giving a name here, 
you have different options to choose a bucket in the same account or a different account. Options to choose from within a VPC or from the internet. And leave the settings as default and then click create access point. In real production, you will be using access point policies to enforce fine-grained access controls to different principles. This can be thought of as a, a different version of applying the bucket policies, but in much more simplified fashion. I have already created one and kept for our purposes. So one simple uh, access point pointing back to the bucket here. The second step is the core function of the S3 object Lambda. At the beginning of the session, you know that Pradeep mentioned about the various use cases. So all the business logic for those use cases are codified in this Lambda function. It can be redacting, it can be transformation, it can be masking or enriching information, depending upon your organization's needs. This example does a transformation of converting the text information to an uppercase form. Obviously, along when we mention about Lambda, the other components such as making sure the IAM roles, having talking to different services are put in place to communicate to each other. The final step in this process is tying all the pieces together. Going to S3, Object Lambda Access Point in the left pane brings you to the page to create the Object Lambda Access Point. This is the point through which an application developer will use to access this capability. Creating an Object Lambda Access Point references back to the Access Point setting, which we created in step number one. Also referencing the Lambda function created in the prior step and finally creating it. I have created one for our demo and I will open it for illustration. We have to make a lot of reference to the Amazon resource name. Here you're seeing this access point configured and connected, the Lambda function here, etc. So this creates all the connection all together from left to right. Now is our time for validation. So I'm going to use Cloud Shell. I just created an example prior to the demo, but what I'm trying to do through this validation is using a Python file, which does two sets of API calls to the S3 bucket. One is through the classical get operation, and the other one is through the object Lambda access point, which we have created. When we use these two API calls, the output of which is right one below the other, as you are seeing this original object from Lambda, original object from the S3 bucket, which is the access information, and the object processed through the object Lambda, which is all the uppercase information. So the second API call is really hitting the object Lambda access point, getting transformed with the Lambda code that we did the processing based on the information that we have pointed to the bucket, which quote unquote is our master data set in this example. When we translate this back to the real life situation, you can think of this as one person or a user within a sales or marketing group trying to access a master data set for a particular transformation view. However, a person from an analytical team or finance team who wants to access the same master data set from a different perspective or a different form can hit a different Lambda function that does the corresponding transformation. And so these two different personas will have two different workflows, but hitting and leveraging the data in the master data set. One of the primary advantage, as you have observed, is we didn't have to create different variations of the same data set for different personas and making it static, which is uh, time cumbersome as well as a cost ineffective, ineffective way. So that's how it can be used in a real life production. Now back to this presentation here. 
Yeah, that was, that was a really great presentation. Thanks, uh, Rajesh. Uh, so let's look at a few best practices and considerations while using object lambda, right? Uh, first is security. Obviously, security is the number one priority at AWS. Uh, you want to kind of really have this to be very secure. Uh, so using simple security measures like, you know, using uh, SSL connection, connectivity, uh, having principle of least privilege, using signed URLs, all of those would kind of provide an additional layer of security, and that would be the best practices to go on with as well. Uh, let's look at service limits and quotas. Uh, so a few things that you have to consider while using the services, the uh, uh, object lambda only works for get list and head services. So all, all get, get read kind of services. It does not work for put or post kind of services. Uh, you can only use about thousand objects, thousand object lambda access points per AWS account per region, right? And the region uh, in which you have the access point should also be the region where the S3 data is stored. So you need to have those, it should be the same region as well. Uh, then we look at response times and quotas. Essentially, uh, you the, the stream should complete within 60 seconds. You don't want to go over 60 seconds, in which case you might have like an error message coming back and data integrity and intent, and be very intentful while using this, uh, because uh, as there is a processing step involved, if this is not done with intent, it might end up being called multiple times and can cause additional uh, cost. Uh, also uh, expose this connection to other AWS services as needed, as you know, you know this could, this, 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 as, as with anything that you can have do in cloud, be very intentful, right? Uh, so let's look at a few resources. Again, these resources are available uh, in the description. Also, you can kind of use it to start learning more about S3 Object Lambda. Uh, so thank you very much today uh, from me and Rajesh uh, for learning Object Lambda with us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.